wonderful. Is there anything from... Oh, Betty Jo, you've been dunking that dog in Billy Joe's bubble bath again? No, oh, ma'am. You've been dunking yourself? No. And what in the world? Uncle Joe got a perfumed letter. <laughs> Our Uncle Joe? Joseph Carson Esquire. Well. Hey, did I get everything? What is that? <laughs> Don't look at me. Uncle Joe got a letter. Well, viva la France. <laughs> did I get a letter from... Betty Joe? I told you to stay out of my bubble bath. It's not me. Uncle Joe got a letter. Hey, old rocket chair hasn't got him yet. <laughs> Who's it from? All it says in the back is S-W-A-K. Sealed with a kiss. <laughs> Good morning, Good morning Uncle, Uncle Joe. Joe. There's a mail in. Can't you smell it? Huh? Give Esquire his letter. <sighs> you know, it's against the law to sniff other people's United States mail. <laughs> so, who's it from? Probably from my insurance agent. S-W-A-K? Smith, Waterfield, and Klein Smith. <laughs> Stamps, I hit them. What'd you do that for? Because the way you've been using them lately, you'd think we were printing them ourselves. Hey, okay, where'd you put the stamps? No stamps till I find out who you're writing to. But, Kate, this is private and personal. Ah, use your own stamps. Kate. Uncle Joe, you're not fooling anybody. We know you're corresponding with some woman. Who is she? In the words of that famous president, I do not choose to tell. <laughs> anything out? Just what some famous president said. <gasps> Mom, we can't stand it any longer. We've got to find out who she is. Well, it's eaten at my curiosity, too. There must be some way of finding out. I know. Next time he gets a letter, why don't you steam it open? Bobby Joe, I wouldn't do a thing like that unless the other idea I have doesn't work. <laughs> you didn't want us to know who you were writing to. Now, Kate. After what she did to you. She didn't do nothing to me. Oh, no. She just left you standing at the altar with a wedding ring in one hand and a Dear Joe letter in the other. It wasn't a letter. It was a postcard. Oh, yeah, from Niagara Falls, where she was honeymooning with your best man. Having a wonderful time. Naturally, you can't be here. <laughs> Woman's got a right to change her mind. 
She certainly waited till the last minute. They played six choruses of Here Comes the Bride, and all that came down the aisle was the carpet. <laughs> That's all water over Niagara Falls now. George Perkins has gone to his glory. That's why she wrote to me to let me know and ask my forgiveness. And you forgave her. Oh, Uncle Joe. Kate, you know why I've been a bachelor all these years? Not because I wanted to, but because there was no one else for me but Mary Alice. <laughs> Mary Alice. You think I've enjoyed being lonely all these years? Sleeping in a cold bed with nobody's warm feet to my back but my own? <laughs> don't often get a second time to strike out in the World Series of Love. Kate, you wouldn't begrudge me one brief moment of happiness in the reclining years of my life, would you? Well, you know I don't. All I ask is a little understanding. If I can forgive Mary Alice, why can't you? Yeah, I guess you're right. If someday you should meet her again, you'd be nice to her, wouldn't you? Oh, of course I would. I'm awful glad you feel that way, because this letter should tell me what time she's arriving here tomorrow. She's coming here? Kate, congratulations is in order. Mary Alice finally accepted my proposal again. <laughs> this is my footlocker. I thought maybe Mary Alice would like to have it on her bed. Well, yeah, I think she would. Say, you think I should hang this on the wall? Why? The room doesn't leak. Oh, it's an engagement present for me and Mary Alice from the Hooterville Canoe Club. See, I've been unable to locate our twin raccoon-covered bicycle seats the touring club gave us for our tandem. Uncle well, Joe, aren't you supposed to return presents when somebody breaks an engagement? Mary Alice never broke an engagement. She just married somebody else for the time being. <laughs> Don't you think you ought to get fixed up or something? She'll be here any minute. Yes, 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 yes. We'll do what we're supposed to do. Why don't you go get yourself slickered up, huh? Go on. Betty Joe, would you put this on the bed, dear? Mm -hmm. I pine for you and balsam too. <laughs> Brother, the expression is, oh, you kid. <laughs> you know, I just can't get over Uncle Joe getting married. Why shouldn't he? Well, she left him waiting at the altar. Now, girls, let me make one thing clear. What's past is past. And if Uncle Joe can forgive and forget, the least we can do is go along with him. All the way? All the way. All right, let's nail the paddle on the wall. Well, we might draw the line somewhere. <laughs> She's getting her things together. Well, why didn't you give her a hand? Calm down. You are as squirmy as a man on a raccoon-covered bicycle seat. Look, boy. Joe. Mary Alice. Oh, Joseph. Let me look at you. I wasn't sure you'd recognize me. That's why, that's why I wore the carnation. <laughs> Better not stay in the sun too long or the wax will melt. <laughs> you haven't changed a bit. Just as young and handsome as ever. Oh, Mary Alice. Ain't you gonna kiss her, Joe? Floyd. Kiss her or get out of the canoe. Get out of your own business. I think it's a splendid suggestion. Joe, they're just teasing you. Kate! Okay, she'll be your new aunt-in-law. Mary Alice, it's so nice to see oh. you. Joseph has always been so wonderful and forgiving. I didn't know... If... Oh, the past is forgotten. And if you need a flower girl, I'm available. <laughs> um, I, I want you to meet the rest of my family. These are my three daughters in the order of their appearance. Billy Joe, Bobby Joe, and Betty Joe. Hi. Why, they're beautiful. No sons? No, I... I... Uh, the Joe on their names is in honor of me. Kate was hoping to name one of them just plain Joe, but they didn't turn out right. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, that's the family. <laughs> we forgot the dog. Oh, he ain't worth meeting. That's just a mutt that incinerated his way into our affections with a hard luck story. <laughs> Cute. Uh, well, let's all go up to the hotel, huh? Oh, yes. I'm dying to see it. 
Hey, Romeo, how about Mary Alice's bags? Bring them up to the hotel, boy. <laughs> we'll help you, Floyd. Thanks. Thanks he's a big man just cause he's got brilliantine on his hair. <laughs> But we call it home. It's charming. Just the way I remembered it. You haven't made one single improvement. <laughs> well, we, uh... You know, Kate, when George and I were in Europe, we paid money to go through old ruins that weren't half as quaint as this. <laughs> Thank you. I, uh, never thought of uh, charging for looking. You know, Kate, being a widow myself, I know how grateful you must feel to have someone like Joseph to help you take care of the uh, little you have. Yes, uh, little. If it hadn't been for Boo Boo, I don't know what I would have done. Who's Boo Boo? Boone Webster, George's lawyer and our dear friend. Well, Boo Boo was just a tower of strength. Well, you should have wrote me. I would have towered for you just like I did Kate. I just stuck around here because she needed me to keep her from going under. Yes, uh, uh, Uncle Joe's been like a pair of water wings to me. <laughs> My Jojo was always so unselfish, so willing to give of himself, even when he's being taken advantage of. Oh, Mary Alice. Uh, not, not only is he unselfish and willing to be taken advantage of, but uh, he does a great imitation of, of a short, fat Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> Why don't you show Mary Alice to her room? Oh, here, let me take those bangs. When the bellboy closed the door and George locked it and turned to me, I said to myself, oh, what have I done to my poor Jojo? It was darn nice of you to think of me at a time like that. I sent you a postcard as soon as I could. Oh, well, even if you hadn't, I didn't know everything was off when you mailed me back my elk's tooth. Sure. You still have it? Brush it every morning. And you've never given it to anyone else? I've never known another girl worthy to wear my tooth. Michelle, I'm such a lucky girl. Oh. <clears throat> I just wanted to see if your room was all right. Oh, it's just wonderful. Oh, oh, I forgot. You have the bathroom exclusive from 8 to 8.30. That's prime time after Billy Joe. You're sure I'm not inconveniencing anyone? Oh, of course not. Betty Joe won't mind getting up an hour earlier. Now, wait just a second, Joseph. I don't think it's right for the girls to have to rearrange their routine for me. Oh, they don't mind. Kate, they're your daughters, and this is your home. And I am not going to interfere. <laughs> rearrange the lobby. No kidding. For a minute, I thought I was in the wrong hotel. It's sure a big improvement over the way you had the furniture stuck around. There was nothing wrong with the way it was. You don't like it? Of course she does, honey. Don't you, Kate? Well, I, uh... I modeled it after the way they had the lobby arranged at Claridge's. That's in London. That's London, Europe. <laughs> Mary Alice... Oh, Kate, you don't have to apologize. I understand perfectly. <laughs> Just like my grandmother. The older she got, the more she resisted any little change. Of course, you're not as old as my grandmother. But this is your hotel, and I'm not going to interfere. And a large box of raisins. Need any help? I've got all my working clothes. Oh, that's cute. I bought it in Paris, France. Oh, that's where it is. <laughs> oh, you did the breakfast dishes. Yeah, I don't like them hanging around to have to lunch. But you promised to call me. I did. Really? I don't know how I miss hearing you. Maybe the uh, pillow was over your ear while you were napping. <laughs> well, I'm at your service. Well, there's really not much to do right now. I was just dictating a shopping list to Billy Joe. Don't let me interfere. 
Let's see. Oh, you better put down... Uh... Is that your hand? Yes, ma'am. Billy Joe's studying to be a secretary. Well, you're a good girl. Learning a trade to help support your mother. <laughs> well, what, what was the last thing we had on the list? One large box of raisins. Oh, yes. I need a five-pound sack of maple flour. Maple flour? Oh, are they still making that? <laughs> I guess so. I'm still using it. <laughs> uh, we need a can of... Uh... Have you ever tried O'Donnell's pre-sifted flour? It's got vitamin B1. I like maple. It's got lumps. <laughs> really, Kate, it would have made such a difference in that cake you served last night. <laughs> Mom would have had to try. Well, don't let me interfere. But if you want to be old-fashioned... <laughs> uh, we need a new knife sharpener. <laughs> Thanks for everything, Aunt Mary Alice. Have a lovely time, dear. I will. <laughs> night, Mom. Good night, Betty Jo. Betty Jo? <laughs> Come back here. <laughs> you mind telling me just what you're made up for? <laughs> the dance at the high school gym. Who's taking you, Rex Harrison? Uh, you march in your room, scrub your face, take off that nightgown, and put that possum back in the trap. This is real mink, and this is real French. And I'm real mad. Now you do as I say. But Aunt Mary Alice, listen. Aunt Mary Alice. Oh, doesn't that little girl look just darling? Mom doesn't like it. Oh, dear. Mom, can I... No, you go in and change. But, Mom... Do as your mother says, Betty Jo. Okay, if you say so. I do. I'm terribly sorry, Kate. I certainly didn't mean to interfere. <laughs> oh, gee, Mom, you're so old-fashioned. No wonder you never got to go to Europe. <laughs> The precious little doggy want to sleep in Aunt Alice's itty bitty room. You don't mind, do you? Not one itty bitty bit. <laughs> Uncle Joe? Uncle Joe? Mary Alice gave it to me. George had hardly worn it. Uncle Joe, I think it's time we had a little talk. See if it still fits. Well, it fits, but you don't. You must have put on 30 pounds since you wore that at your jilting. Kate, can you fix this? Uncle Joe, I got a million things to do before the wedding tomorrow. Well, what am I going to wear? Oh, watch it, watch it. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, we ain't got any vacancies. The place is sold out for a wedding. Told him we ain't got no vacancies. Oh, Joseph, this is Boo Boo Webster, George's devout friend and my attorney. Oh, you're the one that's going to give Mary Alice away. I'm Joe Carson, her intended financier. Ah, yeah, you're a lucky man, Mr. Carson. And I'm Kate Bradley. How do you do? Niece. Uh, how are you, Counselor? I'm Sam Drucker. I'm Justice of the Peace. I'm going to tie the knot. Yeah. Come on, I'll show you to your room. Oh, wait a minute, Kate. 
We may need him for a rehearsal. Oh, we don't need a rehearsal. All Mr. Webster has to do is to lead Mary Alice down the stairs to the bottom where you'll be standing with your knees knocking. <laughs> After that, it's just a hop, skip, and a jump to I now pronounce you man and wife. I still think we need a rehearsal. He don't know the stairs too good. Oh, Uncle Joe, Mr. Webster will be able to get Mary Alice down the stairs with no trouble. Come on. Of course he will, darling. And before you know it, we'll be Mr. and Mrs. Oh, Mary Alice. <laughs> what you doing? Fixing the Honeymoon Express. <laughs> well, come on. We're the best man. Hey, you busted my rice bag. <laughs> supposed to be in the parade? Uncle Joe, I think he's trying to tell you something. Huh? <laughs> Dear Joe, when you read this, Boo Boo and I will... Oh, Uncle Joe, I don't know what to say. Poor Uncle Joe. This is awful. Yeah, Joe, we're sorry. It couldn't happen to a nicer guy. <laughs> next time. Ain't gonna be no next time. I've learned my lesson. When a girl leaves you standing at the altar once, you should stay left. <laughs> Uncle Joe, this is gonna sound awful selfish, but I'm kind of glad it happened because I don't know how we'd have gotten along without you. I was worried about that, too. Oh, Uncle Joe. That's why after the honeymoon, Mary Alice and I were going to move right back here with you. Uh, well, I, uh, I guess we better break this up. Yeah, we'll see you, Joe. Bye, Joe. Hold on. There was going to be a party, wasn't there? Well, yeah, but just celebrate the wedding. Well, according to this letter, that took place. Now that the shock's all worn off, I'm doggone glad to be able to celebrate the fact that it wasn't mine. <laughs> This has been a Filmways presentation.